The Claret Jug has travelled through four continents on its IFQ journey. And with just under a month to go until the Open Championship tees off, it arrived at England's Sunningdale Golf Club. This was the fifth and final destination in the international qualifying events that saw the Claret Jug finish a journey of over 36,000 miles to arrive at Sunningdale. It isn't the first time the club has held the IFQ as it continues to weave itself into the history of the illustrious Open Championship. This is the ninth year that the club has hosted Open Qualifying. First played in 2004 and uh, we've had some wonderful winners here. Sunningdale is a, a great club and they're, they're so helpful to the RNA here by staging events like this. And of course Sunningdale being so near London, so near Heathrow, it's very convenient to the tour players moving from, from one event to the next. I think they're going from Germany through here to, to Ireland this week and off of them. So it's a, it's a combination of convenience for the players, but these magnificent courses, the old and new here at Sunningdale, provide just the right sort of test to you know, pick 10 players for the, this year's Open Championship. I think there could be some really low scores today. We have super conditions, the greens are receptive, and some very experienced winners out there who I think will attack the pins today. 96 players battled it out over 36 holes with one round on each of Sunningdale's two courses for the 10 available spots. And among the competitors, some recognizable faces. But it was a more unfamiliar face to most who set the early benchmark. England's James Morrison with a first round 63 to lead the way at six under par. This is my third year on tour. I played the US Open at Pebble Beach my first year. I finished bogey bogey here last year to miss by one. So um, I really want to qualify this year. It, it mean everything. I mean, obviously the ultimate would be the Open at St Andrews, but it's not there this year. So any Open's fantastic. Jose Maria Olazabal was also putting together a good round, but this bogey on 18, one of three for the Spaniard in the final four holes, left him with plenty of work to do in his second round. Well, I'm disappointed on the, on the way I finish. Uh, I, I let three shots go away uh, in the last four holes, and, you know, uh, disappointed with that. Uh, I still have a chance this afternoon, but I'm going to have to, you know, play a little better than I did the last few holes. While some of the late starters were still enjoying lunch at the midway point, James Morrison was continuing where he left off. This birdie putt on 18, so close. But he would sign for a second round 68 and set an early target of eight under for the day. I hope I've done enough. I think I'm leading right now, but um, I don't, I'm not won't be leaving any time soon, put it that way. So fingers crossed it holds on. I'm delighted and played very well. I want, to, I want it to be tomorrow now, I want to play now. <laughs> Meanwhile, weekend challenge tour winner Sam Walker appeared out of nowhere to sign for a second round 65. Minus six for the day, outright second place. To do this today, it's just great for everybody, for my family, my manager, my caddy. It's just everything's fantastic today. Ross Fisher finished his first round with three birdies on the bounce but was struggling on his second. This par putt on the ninth kept him in the hunt at four under before a birdie two on 17 secured his spot. It's tough because you know you've had a good score. You kind of have a sneaky look at the board and see what's, what's what and I knew I had to go out there and play solid golf. I knew if I shot a round par I'd have a good chance so one over I was kind of thinking don't know if I've done enough but obviously you know, managed to just scrape in, so very pleased. Eight players had tamed the Sunningdale courses to book their spot at this year's Open Championship, and with just two places remaining, it came down to a playoff. Ollie Fisher and Oscar Floren fell at the first hole before this long putt from Torbjorn Ollison. A birdie ensured automatic qualification for the Dane. So one spot left up for grabs and the pressure was mounting. Lee Slattery's perfect second shot into the green put him on course for par. Alistair Forsyth then had this putt to halve the hole, but it wasn't to be for the Scot. A return to the Open Championship for Englishman Lee Slattery on a course that has some very happy memories. I used to have lessons there, you know, when I played for the county squad for Lancashire when I was young. Uh, Eddie Birchinoff, who's, who's the head professional down there, used to coach me. Um, so it'd be nice to see him, and uh, he always said he wanted to see me coming up the last hole at, uh, at Lytham. So he's got his chance this year, which is great. I think we need to play in these bigger events, certainly the majors, to realise what it's all about this game and 
you know, I've been fortunate enough to play in a British Open and a US Open now, now another Open, and um, they, they are the best of the best, you know, and, and if you can play under that sort of pressure, it means you, you should be out here, so it's something I'm, I'm going to really look forward to and hopefully improve going on from that. So as the sun sets on Sunningdale and on this year's IFQ, it's good luck to all the qualifiers in the 2012 Open Championship.